that's, that's the key thing. So, all right, so we're at our final day of the Level 3 Advanced Spine and Upper Quadrant course. Um, we're here in Perth and I've got a couple of participants, friends I'll probably call them as well, Monica and Erin, who have done, have you done Level 2 as well? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, okay. So Level 1, Level 2, Level 3. So we're at the end of five days. So for you guys, both being early career physios, just tell me a little bit about where you're at with your physio at the moment. Yeah, so um, I'm private practice physio, more in the musculoskeletal area. Um, and pretty much been dealing with different types of presentations. So in the private practice itself, on mine sites or sporting clubs. So um, yeah, so you get a various presentations coming. And I'm in private practice as well, um, predominantly musculoskeletal. Um, and also work with um, footy team as well. So get a mix of acute and chronic conditions. So, yeah. so how long have you been working as physios? Oh, I'd say for me just over a year now. Yeah. Same, just over a year. Yeah. Right, so yeah. with that sort of um, work that you've been doing and you've come along and done some drawing courses, how did you hear about the courses initially? <laughs> I actually heard about it through Erin. <laughs> <laughs> I, <actually heard laughs> <it. laughs> I actually heard about it through someone that's already done it. Yeah. Okay, so there are other courses out there. Was there anything that made you particularly decide to do this course as opposed to other ones? Um, I think it's more so because someone else recommended it. So mm -hmm. I guess word of mouth is kind of the best way to go mm -hmm. about it. Um, and a few senior physios yeah. know your name and they're like, yep, yeah, like Doug's pretty good. Like he's very thorough with the course. Yeah. And then do tell with the anatomy. Yep. Yeah, the anatomy is a kind of a big part of it. Mm -hmm. really get hammered with that a fair bit. So given that you've done the intro and then you've done advanced courses in the lower and the upper quadrant, what's been beneficial for you to have done the advanced courses as opposed to just done the intro course? Well, I'd say just same thing with the anatomy. So I guess you go through different muscle areas and clinically I find you'll go through a muscle done in the intro and then there might be another muscle where you're like, oh, you know, like other needle that new muscle that I learned in level two and you'll find that's actually been a lot more beneficial for the patient. Sure. Yeah, I think it gives you more choices to make so um, like with referral patterns a lot of them present pretty similarly so from the basic course you've got a basic understanding of technique um, but then sometimes you don't get the best results out of picking those muscles but they're the only ones you know whereas once you go into depth mm -hmm. then you're able to you know specify this neck muscle compared to this one so you can give the clients like the best best chance of improvement. So looking at the clients that you treated either with the intro stuff or the advanced stuff, is there one that particularly stands out for you that you thought, oh the dry netting really helped me? So definitely like your piriformance, that was a difference in there. Like we learned your glute me, glute mats in the intro. As um, opposed to being piriformance or Yeah, yeah. So I guess really nutting out the difference between all of those instead of just feeling and not and So you're talking them. about the very specific way you palpate, isolate and identify tissue. Yeah, also then I had a really good example with like a QL for instance where you might do the lower portion but still sore and then you go into more your superficial bit of the rib and then that clears. So off the twelfth rib. Off the twelfth rib. Yeah. So just those little differences like that I find made a huge difference. Cool. Yeah. Alright. <laughs> Well, thank you both for taking the time to have a chat and I wish you guys all the best in your future career in physios. Thank you, Dad. See ya. <laughs> Tell us about, a bit about yourself. Well, I'm Richard. I'm from Darwin. I've got a private practice. I work for myself. I've been a physio for, I think this is year 28. <laughs> Feels like 58, but 28. Did you find out from this course, these courses, how your anatomy skills needed to be better because of your dry kneeling? Very much so. Okay. Very much. I thought I was pretty good at anatomy. Yeah. But for the next two weeks, I'm going to go home and revise. And that's because? Because I don't know enough. I didn't. I thought I knew more than I did. Okay. And I don't know enough to be. Um, I know enough, but I don't know enough to be confident and competent. One of the big things I've found about the last few days is is myotomes versus dermatomes. Being a physio, I treat dermatomally most of the time. Yeah, I think people don't realise that their training does make them think dermatonally, so that's a big yeah. recognition about yeah. there are myotomes. Yeah. And other sorts of tomes too, viscerotomes yeah. and yeah. sclerotomes and 
But the myotomes are very important. Um, and I can maybe do better with my clients now because I'll think that uh, I'll look in different places. Yeah, I think the myotome concept is that a person has a pattern of referral and we go dermatonal and what would be the root level associated with that. Yeah. But knowing and understanding myotomes, you say, okay, well, yeah, that's the pattern of referral and it could be a dermatonal mm -hmm. pattern, but there are muscles that also project a similar type of sensation yeah. and I need to check those as well. Big time. Yeah. Big time, yeah. So of the five days, in that five days, what would you say would be one of the two, one or two biggest things that you've learned going away with back to Darwin? Obviously not very much, so we can pass on that. <laughs> I just wonder which one to pick. Yeah. Um, well, that's fair enough. Um, um, it doesn't matter. I need, I need palpation skills. So you got better? I've got better. Um, and there's, muscle, there's muscles I've ne not really considered before. I mean, if I work on a neck, I, I don't, I don't think to myself about spleenius cervicus or yeah. So again, we're trained and we don't realise that we're yeah. trained segmentally. Yeah, we're, yeah, we're not trained to think what yes. muscle. Yes. And the neck is a classic. Yeah. You know, as I said, until probably age of thirty-five or forty, you probably don't have articular problems. Yes. So therefore, the restrictions, the lack of movements, the things that we perceive as being a joint stiffness, yeah. is probably more just a muscular. You know, dysfunctional tightness or whatever to I think what I'd like to do too is go away and get really really good at this and then come back in a year or two and do a masters okay do, do we, with you wherever, wherever that happens to be yep. yeah yeah it's right. good so it was uh, money well spent guys <laughs> well thanks for your time Rich it's That's been right. a pleasure catching up with you it really was thank you and, very much and um, we'll see you around probably a couple of years time then for yeah. the masters mm -hmm.